Welcome. Very lovely to be with you. Grace, hello, Grace. And Lisa, hello, Lisa. Olga, hello, Olga. Holly, hello, Esther. Hey, George. Hola, Fernando. Hello, Desmond. Hello, Jenny. And Shalom. So, if we could so, hold gas. I will. I don't want you to be disrupted, so oh, good. Yeah, good. let you Thank go. You. Let you go for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so just sitting comfortably, and if it's possible for you to lower your gaze or close your eyes, whichever way you're comfortable, that's possible for you. And uh, relax as presence. Welcome your experience just as it is. Whichever way it is. You don't need to do anything. Simply rest effortlessly in a way that is completely sufficient. Resting at the heart of our experience, irrespective of how our experience is presenting itself. in the presence, pure presence, is the peace, the peace of our true nature, the causeless peace of being.
you can invite the question in a friendly way. What is the reality of my experience right now? allow this question to expand in your psyche. What is the reality of my experience right now? be friendly with this question. Is the reality the substance of your experience? Something which appears and disappears? something that you perceive What is it in your experience that does not come and go? That is not defined by thought. Or by feeling.
What is it in your experience that is always there? That you, you can always find? Invite this question to be suspended, alive. In your interest, What is my reality? Can fault, which appears and disappears, answer such a question? Or is the question bigger than fault beyond? the reach of thought. is the reality of my experience and my reality different realities? Is my reality and the reality of my experience defined by the mind, by appearances, by perceptions. Could it be that It is beyond form. Beyond shapes and sounds.
beyond movement. Beyond memory. Can I free fall in this question? Could it be that this free fall is much closer to the reality than so-called fixed images and mind impressions. Because in this free fall, there is no one no separate entity. when we channel out into the mind, into the world, into thought, we move towards forms But when we turn in the direction of reality, let's say different direction. One could say it's an inward direction, although there is no
reality to inward and outward. Whatever emanates, emanates from source. And whatever emanates from the source has the touch, the stamp, of the source throughout every aspect of it. So you're experiencing perceptions, refer to their source, to their reality. which is never hidden, never absent. The mind does not know what the heart knows. But the heart knows the mind. The heart is never hidden. It's just that the interest may be focused or directed on the mind of the world. But whenever your interest turns towards the source, towards the heart, it's right there.
you just cannot find it via the mind. What is the reality of my experience? Such a clean question. A direct question. Rest at the core of this question. Allow this question to permeate your being. So that your entire being is this question. Every breath, every sensation, expresses this question.
Okay. If there are any questions or anything you would like to discuss, please make sure to unmute your mic and love to see you as well. If you are open to it, so any questions? Oh, hello, Herbert. Um, Magdi, what about this mechanism of blaming a friend for certain things? I mean, to judge someone, just to, to judge another, is it always only my own business, my own mind content, or is there really another who has, yeah, just... Yeah. Very simple. The way everybody is doing whatever their capacity, their potential, their understanding at the moment. Whatever guides their behavior in the moment is not something that they are fabricating or manufacturing or controlling or as as a, a particular mind this particular mind is a, in a way a moment by moment mind a particular perception a particular if you arises uh, in a way like the weather does arise, there is a personal a fabricator, a personal choosers shifting through a library of thoughts or perceptions and picking and choosing a certain cards out of the deck. And yes, there is a sort of a I could say a, re a recurrent or a fault or a shade, a, a, sh a certain shade, a certain shading or a shadow or a stain or in our experience, which is the uh, belief and the feeling of a personal chooser, or a personal doer, a personal subject, a personal victim, etc. Mm. 
somehow we learned, we, we picked this stain, this, we picked this subroutine at a very young age. It's in a way you know, passed on the baton, the baton of ignorance there. We are we were born in it. The body mind uh, mirrors it, adopts it as a, a the primary sense of me. And of course, also the sense of the other. So this is a sense of me, it goes hand in hand with the sense of the, the other. So I'm a personal doer, you're the person, you're another personal doer. The subroutine is shared via minds, across minds. And so from that program, from that perspective, we believe and we feel there is a personal doer and chooser here and a personal doer and chooser there. And then the complexity of relationship and feelings, and blaming, and forgiving or not forgiving, or that dualistic model gathers complexity. becomes sort of pervades our our experience, our feeling. You know, we feel as a if if a, if failing or failed. Um, somebody you know, f- failure or 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 sometimes no sometimes we're really on top of the mountain and this the same about others it's projected it's, it goes hand in hand I'm good, she's bad, he's bad. I'm better, he's, he's whatever, you know, I'm right, they're wrong. You know, the complexity. So the, the blaming aspect of and the forgiving aspect, which goes hand in hand with the blaming, but it's not, it's not the forgiving that comes effortlessly, effortlessly from understanding. There is so-called personal forgiveness, which is connected to the sense of separation. So it's, it's part of the uh, part of how our dynamics you know, are, uh, are complex, the complexity is part of the complexity of our dynamics within ourselves and in relationship. The, the 
the great reaper, the slayer of ignorance is understanding. The understanding that this is just a subroutine, it's a model that is not based on our actual experience, on reality. It's a, a thinking, feeling model that is stuck in a certain in despair that is due to the inherited sense of separation that is the despair is at the, the heart of that. It's right there, it's inherent to the sense of separation. So the understanding, understanding about the formless the universal reality of consciousness, of the reality of the one reality, the reality of everything, my reality, the reality of the world, the reality of the world, of minds, bodies, and universes. Just the reality of, of this moment, the reality that, that is, that's it's absolute, never, not there, that which truly perceives in this moment, formless and shapeless and genderless. It's not a concept, it's our direct experience. So on the relative level, of course, we, we maneuver the vehicle we are driving to keep it on the road. You don't want to go into the off-roading, except if you have a, the right vehicle for it. <laughs> and some roads are smooth, other roads are uh, a bit potholes or they're rocky. So you, at that le relative level, you maneuver according to the situation, according to the, what you are given, what vehicle you are uh, navigating. what you encounter on the road. But you navigate with the understanding about truth. And truth is one. Truth is love, not the personal love, but it's non dual Everything is uh, imbued with the truth. So you navigate one hand on the wheel and the other hand is in God's hand. So God navigates through you. She's a good navigator. Thank you, Magdalene. Okay, okay. Thank you, okay. 
Hello, Walter. Hi, Maggie. Yes. Thank you for, for that, um, for your guidance. I, I have a, a, just a follow-up to that. Maybe, you know, I'm a police officer. Um, we're, we're all wired different, differently. This particular vehicle has a role to play in society. I wear a uniform that says police. And I'm expected to do my job. And yet, <clears throat> there are many different ways I could do my job. I have many different tools. This understanding has shown me that the best way to do that is to use the least amount of force with the greatest amount of compassion. And when you are doing your meditation uh, with us and you're guiding us, it's not scripted. You, you are in touch with, you are informed by this understanding. Am I correct? I, I, I know that I am. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're dealing with a situation where someone is being a bully, for example, and is a continual, is continually harping on another person, it, it, it would be a lot to say that we needed to use force. But maybe we can, informed by this understanding, try to do something for both of them. Number one, we show the victim that they're loved. We stand up for them. Number two, we show the bully that, hey, there's repercussions and consequences for their behavior, their continued behavior and actions. Now, of course, this can go overboard if it becomes personal. Um, but what I'm asking you is that consciousness expressed through this particular vehicle, who has a role in society to protect and serve, I would be remiss, I would be neg negligent of duty if I did not stand up for those who were not able to stand up for themselves. Am I correct? So let's say you are directing traffic you know the uh, in the old days there are people who directed traffic in the in the road before the uh, you know the new modern more modern systems i still do it when but the it, traffic lights are out it's really busy still oh, yes. out there and it's it's a good workout yes so you are directing traffic uh, there is a certain uh way certain technique to direct it, direct the traffic so that it is harmonious there are some uh, ambulance that can come there can be some big big delivery trucks that are coming there may be uh, some uh, motor, motor motorcycle or bicyclists etc there are such a variety and they are very different they somebody on a bicycle and somebody with a dump truck is very different. Uh, they're coming at the same to you and you are the directing the, the truck. So we, in, as a, 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 this example, in your relationship, in relationship with a bully or some potential victim, your job, you are there and you have to direct this traffic. So you say to the bully, you stop, the, the bicycle needs to go, uh, uh, truck stop, the bicycle needs to go. Now, of course, just by the fact that you are wearing a uniform, you have the training and, and all, all society has is part of you, it says yes to you. When you say stop, then the truck has to stop so the bicycle can go. And if the truck does not stop, then you have to take some action. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends what is available to you to do. I, there are, of course, a certain methods, certain training of how to deal in this case, that case, this case, etc. This is why you are in that position. 
So in uh, the relationship between the bully and uh, the, the person who is bullying, bullying too, it is just that situation. There isn't a bad guy and a good guy. There is a dump truck who is refusing to slow down or is not slowing down uh, correctly. And there are steps to be taken. Maybe we, sometimes they have the, the things for the tire. You have to stop the truck. So you put those tire things on the road and the truck will lose the air out of the tires, will come to a stop. It will not be fun, but at least it will not <laughs> get worse. It's going to make some damage, but not whatever. There are techniques. Right. So the thing that I'm emphasizing is that it is impersonal. It is, it is just a situation. You are facing a situation. Now, it's true that people believe they are a person. And that makes them stubborn. They are defending. What are they defending? They're defending their sense of me, which is deep down, deep, deep down, a cry for help, a cry for love. <laughs> on all sides, on, from the Buddhist side, from the bullied, from the bullied side, and from the bullying side, is the cry for help, for love. But we, you have a situation that does not give you so much ample time some, sometimes or ample leeway. And so you, you respond from both your instinct, from your training, and from your heart. They're all there. Your heart, your love, your training, your intelligence, and your instinct. And sometimes... You take that person's arm, put it behind their back, you put them down, and you have to put uh, the, the thing on their... their, their uh, the handcuffs. Yes, the uh, handcuffs. Because this is the, what the situation is uh, re requesting to. But we never make that a bad person. Mm -hmm. It is just a bad situation. Mm -hmm. This situation has a festered, you know, for so long. Maybe the cry for help was not uh, addressed or we don't know. We don't, it's, we cannot know. And it's not your business to know. Your business is to deal with the situation. So, yes, via your, your uh, contemplation of truth and via your, your heart, you have a, an understanding, and that understanding is there in your life, in all your actions. But there is also the, the world has, as it appears to you. So you act, you're acting in the world in a certain, in a certain way as the situation presents itself. And uh, your understanding is always there. I mean, even when you are taking a person down and forcing them to, mm -hmm. to be still, you are not acting out of uh, enmity or uh, dislike. You are acting out of love. Absolutely. In situation. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And this, this, thank you for saying that because it, I, I, you know, it is easy to take things personally when you see somebody who's harming another. It is, it is, it's sometimes there is personal involvement. There's no question, but it, it's not lost on me that you're, what you're saying here is that there is as much love and compassion for the bully as there is for the bullied. And sometimes, as you say, it's necessary to intervene and say to them, stop. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's so, it's, it can be very uh, helpful and sobering. Uh, in, in a way that they are inviting you to, to, to tell them, okay, stop it. You're not, go, you're not, you're not going beyond, beyond this line. They're inviting you by their actions to say, okay, 
And so you will stop them and they will get what they're asking for, which is for you to stop them. And, and that goes much deeper than just being stopped um, at the physical level. There is an other, other elements involved, but, but not to take it personally. Not, I, I understand what you're saying. It's, it may at some time, you know, we may be challenged by somebody who's taking themselves personally then we may be challenged for you to also take them personally and take yourself personally. You see what I mean? I so, do. And that's, <laughs> that's a little bit tricky. We, we, fall, we, we may you know, fall into that, but, but because I know your, your, your love is in the right place, even if you take things personally, you will not hold on to that. Yes. Yes. The love comes back to your heart, and and you wish them, you wish all parties, you know, uh, peace and uh, uh, and causeless happiness. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you. Well, the world is lucky to have a policeman like you, Walter. <laughs> oh, thank you, Magdi. Thank you, and it it is uh, it is a privilege and a joy. Um, to 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 serve and to be considered a police service as opposed to a police force. Wonderful. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a it's also wonderful for this understanding to to maintain that that uh, yeah. impersonal aspect. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, very beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Great, it's great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, well, very lovely to be with you all. Grace, Holger, Walter, George, Holly, Fernando, Lisa, Malcolm, Desmond, Jenny, Shalom, Shiva, and Recha. Thank you all. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you, Magdi. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Magdi. Bye-bye. Love to all. Thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs>